Coming up, weather conditions improve for holiday travelers as we get closer to Thanksgiving. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Huntsley. After a nasty Tuesday, the heaviest rain is now out of the mountains, and that should make it a much smoother drive to your Thanksgiving destination. First alert meteorologist Cameron Aaron has an early look at the holiday forecast. Cameron? Yeah, see, for much of the eastern coast, we are tracking some much better weather for Wednesday, also on Thanksgiving itself for Thursday. So some much better conditions on the way once we get through tonight, though right now on first alert pinpoint Doppler, we are still watching out for a few more leftover showers, especially in the big Sandy Valley from Pike County into Mingo, also Logan counties in West Virginia. So nothing too heavy, but a few showers not too far away from Pikeville, also Belfry and Phelps as well. Watching out for a few spotty downpours. They're all thanks to this cold front that continues pushing off to the east, but like we talked about, some much needed rain across the mountains, all the areas in green. That is around one inch of rainfall. And again, that drought was continuing continuing to worsen. So that was much needed as we went through much of your Tuesday. But right now, though, we are tracking this cold front to continue pushing off to the east as we go into tonight. And once this passes, more drier, also cooler air begins to filter in as we go into the rest of tonight, also on Wednesday. And you can see where that front is up to 52 for Prestonsburg, also Grundy, 51 for Pikeville. But behind this cold front, down to 46 in Somerset, also 44 in Irvine, and that cooler air will continue pushing off to the east as we go into tonight. Those lows back in the middle to lower 40s. Again, a small chance of a stray shower, but most of us are drying out, also cooling down. More gloomy weather on Wednesday before some sunshine by Thursday. All those details coming up in just a few minutes. Steve? All right, Cameron, thank you. Around 55 million people are expected to hit the roads during the next two days for the Thanksgiving holiday, and now it will cost everyone a little less. The White House is crediting Bidenomics for the lowest gas prices since November 2020. The national average is hovering around 331, with some southern states sitting below $3 a gallon. This is following nine consecutive weeks of falling gas prices. Special Presidential Coordinator for Global Infrastructure and Energy Security, Amos Hochstein, expl explains how he says the administration's policies are changing the economy. Demand is high in the United States, and high demand always drives higher prices. But it's high in the United States because we have a really strong economy right now. And uh, economic growth is up, manufacturing is up, people are traveling more. So all of those strong indicators in the United States mean higher demand for oil and gasoline. Now, OPEC is set to meet November 26th to decide if they will cut production again. If that happens, we can all expect all fuel prices from gasoline, diesel, and airline fuel to all go up due to reduced supply. Several crashes were reported across central and eastern Kentucky today. One woman from Tennessee died on I-75 in Rockcastle County. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office says at one point there were more than eight traffic accidents in one hour in that county, and some people were hurt. Officials are just asking drivers to be extra careful and slow down. State police arrested a Lawrence County man on sex-related charges. Jared Kelly was arrested on Old River Road in Louisa. Police say Kelly used Facebook and Facebook Messenger to solicit underage girls into sending explicit images of themselves. Kelly is being held at the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center. In Frankfurt, police say a newborn was assaulted by her father, and the mother is also facing charges because police say she knew about it and did nothing to stop it. Police say Arian Fredrickson admitted to assaulting the baby to quiet her crying. The baby's mother, Helena Herbert, said Fred Fredrickson tried to smother the baby. Herbert was also charged because police say she knew of Fredrickson's actions for several weeks. State child advocates say they see dozens of cases like this year after year, and it's often with new parents who do not know how to react to stressful situations. But I think just acknowledging that the baby is crying and it's normal and, uh, and remembering that that's how they're communicating and remembering that it's temporary. Police say the baby is being treated for potentially life-threatening injuries. 
Former First Lady Rosalind Carter died Sunday at the age of 96, leaving a legacy of work, love, and hope. WIT's Buddy Forbes has more from another former First Lady who spent time with the Carters decades ago, but remembers it like it was yesterday. Rosalind Carter was known for much more than being a First Lady. Walk softly, but carry a big stick. And she carried a big stick in her own way. Following her death Sunday, the wife of former President Jimmy Carter has been celebrated by many for her dedication to building a better country, starting in battered communities. It's unlimited opportunities. She got on that letter and there she went. Leaving her mark here on the mountains after a visit in 1997, when Habitat for Humanity introduced its Hammering in the Hills initiative, which included the building of nine homes in Pike County. She had a discussion with every worker doing, doing that habitat build. She just, I mean, she was that way. Former First Lady of Kentucky Judy Patton says the build created more than housing. It created hope. One, two, three, and provided a picture of Carter that is clearer than any captured on video during her visit. She was East Kentucky that day. Never knew, knew the difference where she came from. Patton worked with Carter and former First Lady Hillary Clinton on the build, saying Carter showed up as a champion, building up the people who were building the home. She made us feel proud that we were East Kentuckians and that we were doing something good for someone else who could never have a home. That's her legacy. And while she says her condolences for the former president's loss will never be enough. I thank God sent them down to show us everybody, all over the world, how we should live our lives. She knows the things his wife left behind will never be forgotten. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. Patton says the only thing more evident than Mrs. Carter's love for her work was the love she shared with her husband, saying they were the true definition of partners. The funeral for a beloved Laurel County pastor is tomorrow. Greg Deaton died unexpectedly on Sunday. The Whitley County native was the senior pastor at New Salem Baptist Church. His visitation is tomorrow from noon until the funeral at 3 at the Bowling Funeral Home Chapel. Greg Deaton was 55. This Thanksgiving week, as many will gather with family and friends to have big feasts, others are going hungry. Mike Halligan of God's Pantry Food Bank says they see numbers of requests that they've never seen before. He also says people are generous and willing to help when they see how quickly someone can find themselves in need. One paycheck away, one unexpected event, loss of a loved one, a car accident, an unexpected medical expense, loss of a job, uh, low paying wages or lack of benefits, just all kinds of potential issues, uh, kind of what we call the root cause of hunger, that can lead someone all of a sudden not being able to put nutritious food on their table. Halligan says he's also watching Frankfurt and Washington as lawmakers wrestle with finding solutions. The annual Cram the Cruiser campaign is underway. Governor Andy Bashir and KSB launched that effort earlier today. The initiative is going on at all 16 KSP posts and will run from now through December 4th. The goal of that food drive is to help fight hunger in communities throughout the state. Last year, KSP collected more than 218,000 pounds of food. Trooper Matt Gayhart says this food will stay local. But all the food that's donated in our region stays within our region so all the food that we collect from hazard will go to hazard food pantries uh, vice versa the same thing for Whitesburg not getting all of our our drop-off spots the food will be kept locally. Gayhart says they will collect donations at Kentucky State Police Post 13 but he says there will be other collection events around the region too. Another holiday tradition is just getting started. At the state capitol today, Governor Bashir joined the Salvation Army to celebrate the Red Kettle campaign kickoff. The holiday campaign is the largest for the Salvation Army each year, raising money for year-round programs. Governor Bashir also proclaimed December as Salvation Army Red Kettle Month in the Commonwealth. The Salvation Army's Red Kettles and the sound of bells are a symbol of hope 
of love and of generosity. They are something that you can hear and you know exactly what it means. And hopefully it makes us all envision a better world where if we work hard enough, providing the types of opportunities that the next generation deserves. The governor and first lady Brittany Bashir also made the first donation to the red kettle. Legalizing sports gambling has changed how Kentuckians place their bets, but has it impacted the states around us? Experts say Kentuckians are staying at home now because they no longer have to cross state lines to bet. You're not seeing people leave Kentucky every weekend to go bet on college football or the NFL like you were seeing uh, uh, in years past. Linehan says something unique about sports betting in the Commonwealth is Governor Bashir's promotion of it, adding that it's not often you see governors embracing sports betting as much as Bashir has. Invest 606 is celebrating five years of helping small businesses grow. The organization recently announced 14 new finalists for their accelerator program and pitch contest. Invest 606 founder Jeff Marietta says not only are small businesses growing, but people are investing more in the region. If you just look at the growth that we've seen, particularly in the downtowns, um, buildings being renovated, being purchased, people wanting to stay, people coming back, people investing more in their communities, that's in stark contrast to when you go into some urban areas. The 14 finalists are in nine different counties across our region. They are competing for more than $30,000 in cash prizes. I'm Natalie Brand at the White House with details of the deal to free hostages held by Hamas. Plus, we are tracking better weather for the travel rush. Those details coming up after this break.